try to get back to the points which were mentioned. But I don't know, you have questions? Yes? I mean, if it's a conceptual or bigger question, we discuss it here, maybe at the tutorial. But yeah. Okay, yeah. Perfect. This I want to discuss. I want to get back to this because I, that, that I see that it's not super clear. Okay, we, let's let's discuss this. Okay. And okay, that, so actually this is a difficulty of all this course that we have to introduce many concepts and some are okay. So, so okay, I'll try to make it clear. So to start with, there was all this story that there are essentially two types of orders in a financial market in two days financial market, right? There was limit order and market order. I don't know if these are clear. I will write them up what, what they are. Um, so because it's, it's uh, okay, what, what you say is, okay, there is LO is limit order, MO is market order, and they have, the way you define, would define them is a few properties. So let's say, you're trading, you have a direction. You buy or sell, so you have a direction of this. There is a quantity that you want to buy or sell. And there might be a price where you want to buy, buy or sell, right? Depending on, well, depending on what you do, you, you have in mind some type of price. Let's say price wished for, okay? I will call it like this. And okay, so there is a, there is a hidden column here, which is what are we discussing, so the product. But uh, in a, I can always write it there. But we are talking, in most of the cases, we are talking about single products. That there is one given product. It may be the stock of Microsoft or whatever that you're discussing. So, so it's not, in this moment, you're not choosing between Microsoft and Apple. It's one given product. So what does direction mean? Direction means buy or sell. OK? So if you want to buy or sell, that's all, whatever type of order you send, you, you have an idea of you, if you want to, want to buy or sell. And, okay, I mean, it, it, this is logical, but it's also we are defining here things. So, it, so you have a, a, a sign for both cases. Usually we use it plus or minus one because it's simpler in an equation, but it's buying and selling. You also have, you have in mind what is the quantity you want, and actually it's defined for both. So you have a, a total amount of these things that you want to own or that, uh, after the trade, so you want to buy or you want to sell. However, the, where the difference, okay, and you have a product in all cases. However, the difference between limit order and market order is that in the case of limit order, you define a price which you wish, to, if you're buying, to pay for this product. Uh, I will try to give a better example, but so this is the definition. Well, in case of a market order, you don't have this. You say, I want to buy one, a given quantities, I mean, buy a given quantity now. And okay. Of course, you want the best possible price that is available in the world, but you do not define yourself, okay? So this is a question of definitions, and it's clearly true, okay, so and th this should be known. This is the way markets are made. I mean, you could have other type of orders that you define further things uh, that I want to buy. I mean, you, you, this could be some dynamic, dynamic quantities, whatever, but this is the definition to simplify. What is obvious from this is that in the case of a limit order, you are more constrained than in the case of a market order. It's not ensured that you will that you will find someone immediately. So there is a this will you might be have, might have to wait. Or in the language of a limit order book where we are listing these things, you could usually you could say you are queuing, but it doesn't matter. You are waiting. While in the case of a market order, since you have less constraint, but given the fact that there is someone who wants to sell, if you want to buy, so someone to be on the opposite side with this quantity, it's typically immediate. But of course, strictly speaking, you can only say that you have to wait less. You have less constraint. So that's, that's the definition. And, and I mean, 
so this, this seems to be complicated the way we, we put, but, but it's essentially the same if you go into the market. Uh, okay, it's always hard to say good examples because as we started, these products are, are, are well defined and buying one stock of Microsoft is the same as buying another one. So they are identical, there are no differences. But let's say there are several flats that, are, that, that you can buy uh, in the market and they have, they are, they are the same, okay? It's a new set of flats, but for some reason they are not exactly at the same price that they are sold. And you can do different things. You can go there and you say, I'm, 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 I want to okay, buy, okay? The direction in this case is defined, it's one flat, but you say, okay, well, I don't want to pay more than 100,000. People are selling between 110,000 and 150,000, so you'll be there waiting. Or you can come and say, I, have money in my pocket and I really want to move out of my uh, current flat and you want to buy. So, so I mean, these are, we'll get back a bit to the example. So, so this is a question of limit order and market order. And so the word market maker I think is not a super good word actually because we are confusing everyone here now. So why, are this, why is this word market maker? Because traditionally in a market, limit orders were not possible by everyone. If you went to this market, it's to a stock market in the 80s for sure, I think also in the 90s, you could send market order, you, you, you could uh, send market orders to buy or sell. And limit orders were defined by these people who were called market makers or specialists or something, who were designated. They, they, they had a contract to do this. They had the right to be there uh, posting limit orders. They had also obligations of how they have to do. So that's, that's where the word comes from, market makers. Today, anyone can post limit orders in the book. Okay, sorry, ju ju just one step back. So, so these market makers that were designated, of course, there are two directions. So they were there to buy from you if you want to sell and sell to you if you want to buy to be uh, an intermediate, intermediary. Uh, today, anyone can post limit orders in the market, in most of the markets. Actually, it's not, it's, 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 there is no one clear rule. There are different markets can have different uh, regulations, but typically anyone can post limit orders. So it can be you if you go to, you don't need any, I mean, you have to sign a contract, probably, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's different. Market maker is not very well defined anymore. But why we talk about market makers in these models is because many of the intuitions that come up are valid also if there are several people that can place these orders that are queuing for a while and then, then are being executed against or are canceled. Okay, is this clear? And, um, and so most of the models where this came up, okay, the, uh, most of the models where this came up, so there was the, this economics type of models, what we call it Kyle model and Gloston Milgram model. The idea was that uh, you try to describe all people that are trading in a market with a very fine, so very simplified model, and to get intuitions of what, how different people should be acting. And we had in mind that there is only one person here posting uh, limit orders. I will say what's the difference if there are many. And so I think the intuitions of this model, I won't write up these models again, I mean, of course, but, but the intuition that came out is, um, is that in a type of model like this, typically those who put limit orders, so those who are the market makers, gain something because they can define their price, so they pay at the price which they want, and if they are on both sides of the market, they are gaining the difference. But they are afraid, they, 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 they are afraid that the moment, so the moment when they, they execute these guys in the first line is chosen by the second line. So they are afraid that these are not good moments. So this was one of the intuitions. It's actually, we can come, so let, back, getting back to the example of buying flats, you go to the market and say, okay, there are all these flats between 110 and 150,000. You say, okay, I'm ready to pay 100,000. And you say, okay, then go home. They're waiting there, they know that you wanted to buy for 100,000, in three months someone calls you who before wanted to sell for 150,000, calls you, oh, okay, I'm ready to sell you for 100,000 now. So what does this mean? You start thinking, well, okay, maybe there is something, he knows something. The fact that he sends me for 100,000 uh, now, which is much lower than it was before, is might be because there is some big problem with this flat. So you, may, you might decide that uh, you're afraid of this problem, right, of, of, of this situation. Now, in a market, if you are there in the market when someone wants to sell you at this price, you have to buy, so you cannot change your mind at, the moment, at that moment. 
but it's clear that you want to choose your price in a way and change the price maybe dynamically in a way that you, you try to avoid these type of issues. Okay? So the problem of being, uh, of being, uh, how did, what's, what's the good word? So, 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 so that, that the person who chooses the moment will have, might, will have more information that, than you is, is, is logical in any everyday example. And in this type of models, you can get an intuition about this. So what we, what this type of model said is that, okay, several different things, but one was this, that, that, uh, that for the person putting limit order, he has to, well, get an idea of what's the distribution of, of the information, whatever it is, of, of the people on the, on the other side, and, uh, and how many people have information and how many people you are not, you don't have to be afraid of because uh, they are choosing their moments, let's say, if they are putting market orders, it's essentially random. Is this clarifying a bit or it's, yeah? And, um, and okay, and, and actually there were other things that we learned from these models that it's important to have, so for, a, for a financial market to function, actually in this type of stylized models, it's important to have people who are there trading because of not perfect information at least. So this we call noise traders or uninformed. But it is also a trivial claim if, if, if you say that, yeah, everyone is perfectly informed in the same way and they, they, I mean, their conclusions from the same information is the same, then no one will trade. It's in the limit, it's clear. But of course, in a, if you write up a proper model, you, you, you can try to understand what, I mean, quantify them, what noise means, what information means, and come up with, with different regimes of the market where it functions in a different way. And so one more comment on this. So the, so this was the market definition of market maker. Why do we put in these models only one market maker and not 72? Uh, well, because first of all, because these models were made in a period when there were typically one market maker, so it's a historical question. But that the intuitions do not change if there are three market makers there. They are all afraid that someone has more information on them, so they are gaining on trading against people who are stupid and losing against people who, are, who, are, who have some superior information. Of course, actually, in a computation, the model becomes more complicated because they themselves will be in competition with each other, but the intuitions do not change. So the, 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 quantity, the, the final solution, the numbers can change. And this is actually what we have seen. There was this gloucester milgram model where there is a spread as a function of, of, of the dispersion of some variables, and there was a regime where there are two solutions of course, if there are several market makers in competition, you expect the, the, the lower level solution to, 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 to win in that case. If it's only one person here, he, it's not necessary. Okay? Thank you. Mm. I believe you mentioned also Wabrassian auctions, but I think all theory developed afterwards was not good for Wabrassian, but just for this kind of market. Is it okay or, or it works for... It, it doesn't really change the thing. So, 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 so. The idea that you can, so why did we discuss, yeah, today's markets actually, what we discussed, let's say on Friday and we'll discuss today is not, is, is more to these continuous auctions where these are, these are defined. But so the idea that, uh, that, peop, that there are these two types of uh, order doesn't really change in the two situations. And I, why I discussed this war as in auction is more because it gives an intuition of, of Okay, it gives two intuition. One is that how, are, how can you put orders in a market? How can it function? And there is also the intuition that, that okay, you're not happy with the type of market where the, the origin of Arasian, where, where there is no information passing through. So you put an order, you're blind there, and then they say, okay, were you able to buy at this price or not? Uh, in, in a continuous update. But main ideas do not change. So. Uh, okay. Okay, in that, that type of model, no. There is, there is a market maker who is, but actually Kyle will be discussed in the tutorial, so I don't want to go in detail in here. It will be discussed again and properly looking at the calculations, but there, what you do is, you have a market maker, so by definition, he will decide these limit orders. And there is a, and there is an, there is at least, uh, okay, how to con convert it to this language. It would be, Uh, 
okay, uh, we have to think how to, to convert it to exactly this language. It will be discussed in the afternoon, maybe it's better discussing after. But it's, the, the, okay, the same world holds. Uh, okay, we continue. So, so, so getting to, 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 to new things, or, or, okay, first let's start with a bit old things because half of the group wasn't here on Friday. So, so what we discussed is, uh, is a type of model, I mean, people, we won't go through everything again, but there was, all this, uh, uh, there was this idea of coming up with, um, with type of, some type of linear model for the, pri for the changes in the price. So we had this, uh, just write us, so what, what was this propagator model? I just write it up, but I won't do, of course, the calculations again. What, uh, what you say is that there is some type of linear model for the for prices. So you say that the price at T will be some, okay, you always have to put some initial condition, but it doesn't really matter, times the following So where epsilon was the sign of the trade at time t prime, and there was uh, this propagator, so you said, okay, let's assume a model in which each order has the same impact, but it propagates through time. Somehow there is a time dependence here, okay? And, um, and, and what we did is, okay, let's, let's solve this problem for us, and what we had, well, I can even write it up properly, but I don't remember exactly, but what you can do is, uh, well, okay, actually I won't write it up in a clean manner. You do this, you, you, you go to get to expect that you want to get measurables to, 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 to measure. So you say that the response will be some, some type of uh, uh, convolution of this, uh, this propagator and the autocorrelation, okay? The, 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 okay, don't try this rhyme properly. It's, uh, it's, it's just, the idea is this. We studied it yesterday. It's in the slides. I don't try it. It's, it's a bit longer. But what, what do you do? Uh, there, there is a convolution. So, so, so the response is a convolution of, 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 of uh, propagator and correlation. And you can solve it. You have everything. Okay? Uh, the, the, the way I put uh, indices here is, is, is incorrect. Um, but what was the important thing? So, so actually, a, a question came up uh, there. So, okay, so what do we care about this type of models? We, we, we postulated something that is linear, that it's a linear model. What can we do with it? Okay, what, one thing that we saw, what we can do is it. Okay, of course, you can solve what behavior you expect for G, given the behavior of R and C. So you can, you can, you can try to come up. Uh, if you have some analytical analytic form for R and C, you can come up with an analytical form from G. Good, and, um, and what we have seen is that, okay, if this is the analytical form from G, what does it give uh, as impact for, for a meta order, what we decided, so several connected orders, you're trading in the same direction all day, and we saw that it's not, it's, 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 it's not really good prediction, okay? This is what we have seen last time. Is this clear what I'm saying? You, you remember a bit, those who are here, I don't know how we were here. Uh, and so, so, but, but the question that, that, that came up, so actually what this said is that if CL is something like, is a parallel with some exponent, then you can say, then you can find how G will behave with another exponent will be very, very, I don't know, so I think it's this. I don't remember exactly the form. I think it's this that you find, right? Uh, yes. So, so, so we had a, we had, we had a form for, uh, for the propagator, but of course the question, okay, this is given by us. I mean, we define the linear model. We say that, that this should govern the prices, but we know that prices are diffusive, which means that this R will, will become flat. We know how the correlation behaves. It's, it's all defined. We don't get new information from this model. So actually what we can, uh, uh, what I want to discuss is what extra one can uh, can have in this type of model. So, uh, what do, first of all, what does a propagator mean? This is only a mathematical way of writing, but what would this mean? Yeah. So if you said this model was not really good. That's because you have to set the uh, value of beta. Well, it's, you you set the value of yeah. So I mean, the, the way the model is given, it's, it's not that you have to set the value of beta, but you know how R and C behaves. That will define how. 
how G behaves. It's, it's a definition, and then you calculate in the market, but it will be the same. So what, what are the two things that, what, what are important here? I think, uh, okay, two and a half things. So the one is, get an intuition. What, what, does, what, does, what does the fact that you have this G here and it, uh, and it is decaying? So what does this really mean? And of course, what you want to see is, can we look at other predictions that we didn't put in by hand, and uh, do we get good results about those? So first of all, one thing which is, 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 what does the fact that you have this propagator here, which actually decreases, so what would this decrease mean? Of course, you have a market here where you're modeling only the trades. But there are many other things happening in the market. Limit orders can be put and canceled anytime. So there is a lot of activity. I, between, for any two actual trades, I would say that a few tens of events are happening in people deciding that they want to change their price a bit. I mean, they cancel their limit or they, they put it elsewhere, all these. So the effect of a G decreasing in a simple linear model would be that, that, that all these other things that you're not modeling make your impact decrease, okay? Because what are you doing? You're deconvoluting the, the price from the autocorrelation of, 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 of the signs. If you had all events here, every possible event in the world would, would be modeled, then, then a linear model should be just a, a constant, uh, what's the word, a constant uh, uh, kick in the system for everything without any decay. Because all the decay would be encoded in the further events. Nothing, if there is no event coming in the market, nothing can change. Okay? So is this clear what I'm, uh, what I, what we, so, 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 so we, first of all, we get in a type of model like this, we get a bit of an intuition that, okay, so if you measure on the trade level, this G will have some decay, so, so actually, well, it's here. Uh, decay, this has to be effect of everything that we are not modeling. And okay, what is the prediction of this? That one, so, so, one is that if we model everything, all events, then the, the, the so then you can define a G with, a, let's say, actually this was a homework problem, so that you can have several events solve the problem, you will have all the types of correlations, you have, I don't know, let's say you have six type of events, you would have six times six different correlation functions and six response functions, you can solve the system. What you would expect is that if you model all events, then this GP should be somehow constant. So the, the, the impact of, all, of an event should be like this, that there is an immediate jump, and then the, it stays there, it's only this. You model every, every this thing else has to be in, in the propagator of something else. Is, is it clear? I mean, it's, it's simple, it's, there's no finance here. It's, uh, so one thing that we can test is this. Is this true? And, uh, and actually it's, it's from a paper, uh, it's take with a grain of salt, but it seems to be the case. So there are people who, who looked at this. Uh, I will define, so they, they define six events. I will say it in a second what they are. So by chance that I said six. And they seem to be all flat. Okay, there is some propagator for each of them which is flat. So it's again, it's the same thing that we have seen for trades that was decreasing. If you enlarge your, your space, it, uh, it seems to be flat. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not sure that this is completely to be trusted, but it seems to be the case. Actually, the six, three, six type of events that they did is, so MO is market order, CA is cancellation, and LO is limit order. And everything which has a zero means things that didn't change the best bid and best ask, and things have a prime, which means that they did change. So this would suggest that everything that doesn't change immediately, by definition, have, have zero effect on the price, because all its effects, of course, will be due to the correlated events to them later. They didn't immediately change. And all those that change immediately, so the prime events have uh, some level which will be de depend on the structure of the market and they would be flat. So, so there seems to be a sign that, that indeed uh, with, with a finite amount. So of course one possibility would be that, so I say if we model all events this has to be the case, but it might be that you have to, every type of event is different. So if you put a limit order of size one to the best price plus three, 
that would be a different event from putting a, a limit order of size two. Then you have to model really a lot of events. Seems that with six events you can encode and and you get okay results. Excuse me, but aren't all these limit orders and larger orders sort of simultaneous? How do you know if it changes or doesn't change? Well, you can measure between. I mean, you, you you can go in an event time world for each of the cases you do, and you say, okay, did it change the best bid and best ask? It will change the state of the book, the entire limit order book, but you can measure. Is before the, this event and after this event, is the best bid and best ask the same? You can measure it. But can't they be simultaneous? No, you, 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 if, you go, if you move to an event time, so that every, your time ticks when something happens, then there is nothing simultaneous anymore. Of course, there uh, comes up the questions that in different, so, so what would be this in real time? But we don't care about real time very often because what you, uh, okay, I, I don't go here and we can discuss later. But there are many questions that can come up, yeah? But if you define your time to tick when something happened, there is always a finite time difference between any two events. You can, it's, it's your definition of time that makes things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have fixed windows. You're, it's continuous time and you're, yeah. Okay. Uh, but so, so, so this is sort of a, a trivial claim here and a trivial result there. Uh, but you should think a bit about it. This is really, there is no finance here and, and, um, and I think the other thing uh, that that uh, that um, that comes up is okay. Can can we use this model to calculate something new that we didn't put in the model by hand? This can be several things. So, so can we predict something? And of course, the question is okay. Can we predict, predict something that is measurable and can we compare, confront it to to, to actually the measures? Of course, the the, the main thing that one, or the first thing that we want to, to predict is the volatility of the prices. Because okay, we have an idea of how the, how the average behaves here. How, the, how does volatility look like? And actually that's where these type of models do not fare too well. So here is one example. I mean two examples, but uh, um, so for two different stocks, what you see is first of all, so this is okay, this is DL which is uh, which we call signature pot. So it was this guy. So the variance on time scale L divided by the time scale. So first of all, this is what you see on data. So this, this type of curve here. Uh, it's good to back. So, so what, what would this mean for actual data? So what, what does this suggest? How does the, how, 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 how does the price behave? So, aha, someone's cheating there. <laughs> yeah, so, so, no, no, okay, but others with whom I didn't discuss yesterday about this. So, is it, would it be clear for everyone here what was, what's so these points here? The, the, the way they behave, as a, so the way this DL behaves as a function of time lag, what does it mean? So, it's a, I, I wait for an answer. Where V, it's clear what this is. So this is P T plus L minus P T. Okay, can someone tell me? Where? In the, in the after, uh, after. You're talking about this here, yeah. this curve, yeah? So where is it subdiffusive? In the first part. Exactly. So it's D, and exactly. So the fact that it's decayed, it's going down means that this increases less than uh, linearly, so it's subdiffusive. <laughs> the fact that it's flattening out means that it's diffusive. So what would it mean? It's subdiffusive on short scales up to, I don't know, 20 events, this order of magnitude, diffusive after. Um, I wanted to say something about this. Uh, Okay, yeah, well, sure, sure. So, so and, and, and of course, there is also a numerical value. We are just looking at the slope of it to define subdiffusion, superdiffusion, whatever. There is also a level here, 18 ticks, whatever. 
it's that's essentially the diffusivity or the diffusion constant, diffusion coefficient would be. Okay. So now we see what it does. So it's sub so actually for real prices, it's subdiffusive for short scales and, and diffusive for long scales. Diffusive for long scales is always the case. Actually, it is indeed usually subdiffusive for short scales for reasons that one can understand, which we won't go into very much detail now. But the simple propagator model is also shows so this what is called one event is the one event propagator model. So this stuff here, you can see that it's it doesn't have the same behavior. So it doesn't predict what it is. It's, we are not very happy with this model. It's good for some things, but it's not perfect. So what is the difference? First of all, it is super diffusive in the beginning. Then it gets diffusive. Okay, that's not so surprising. Everything will get diffusive if all <laughs> correlations die out. Uh, so two, two things that you can see. One is that, well, the behavior is really different here, and, uh, and the level is different. Now, you can fix these. You can, of course, see here we have something about n that is noise. We can try to we can try to model this noise as different noises to 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 trigger the system, but then it will be a model that is describes it's much general, much less general. So actually, one you one could define this noise as having a a, a, a white noise part that you can tune so that so that you get with this level there, so that that you can play with. Well, the initial sub diffusivity you have to sub versus super diffusivity. It's, it's harder to, 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 to trick. I will say a word about it in a second. And okay, so how can, can, can we fix this? You can add two. I, I have it the same stuff here for two events as well. So this this one here is added. It didn't really change that much. So okay, the actual level of the, so the diffusion co coefficient changes, but still it, there is a super diffusive behavior in the beginning. Which so so it means that. No, these models are not, not good enough. There are things they don't model. There is a positive correlation, which will make on short scales a super diffusion. It's positive correlation between epsilons and each of them behaving the same. There you have super diffusion of short scales, okay? And okay, w one solution to this that actually you, you could model this. Okay, I, I don't want to go. In the noise term, of course, you could put that you put some short term mean reversion noise term. So you, you can play with this, but it becomes... Uh, becomes ugly. You, you, can, you, can, you can tune things to, to fit the data, but, but it, will, it won't be a very general model. Um, actually, I wanted to say one word about why, so why this, so which I mentioned, why is the, there is this subdiffusion for short scales? I don't know if we discussed it before when we were discussing signature plots. So it's, it's not a just one trivial uh, uh, explanation, but I think the main explanation is that on, on, so this is on very short scale, so from one trade to the other, you have some type of mere reversion. So because of the fa fact that you have a, a, in the limit order book, it, so you have a best bid, uh, sorry, best ask, and the best bid, price is moving here and there, we'll, so, so there will be some trivial, uh, Trivial uh, mean reversion on short scales, which which do not contain much information, which is uh, uh, which is some structural effect in these type of markets. Uh, is that okay? So okay, actually, I wanted to talk about something. Okay, uh, I want to say one more thing here about this type of models, just to just to, just to sort of close the loop with what, with those models that we had uh, last week. So actually. You can try to do, so th these are completely mechanical models, and there were these models uh, like the Kyle and Gloston Milgram that, that, uh, that, were, uh, that were more economics-like. So one, you can do something to, to match the two. Yeah. What? You want, I should leave it. Yeah, or what? Yeah. Correlation between? I mean, you have any state of your system, or for example, any state of the market. You do not, you don't want to <coughs> go to that region where the perturbation is so large. So I mean, I was just trying to understand what's the deviation in this model, which we are considering to be small, so that we can use the linear model. Well, okay. First of all, it's a, it's it's good to keep this in mind because it's a simple model. So uh, just the question of can we use it or not. 
you can, it's, we, we, we have these type of models because it's easy to use. You can, it can give predictions, they won't be perfect, but sort of give an idea. So that's why we have linear models. Now, if you have extremely long correlations, I mean, long correlations in what? In epsilon. Okay. For example, in epsilon, you see that you have, you have uh, well, long memory. Still, a linear model can work. For me, that's not, that's not the problem. You could have a linear that some things are linearly, uh, long range correlated, but there are linear effects. The problem is that we see that there are several things that they don't explain about the nonlinear effects. <laughs> So epsilon, which is the, the what, what is, I didn't get back to this, epsilon is the sign of the trade, which is the order flow. We saw that it's, uh, it's actually okay, it's L to the minus half, roughly. It's a heavy tail, so yeah, it's a heavy tail, I mean, power law, right? Yeah, but it's a correlation, so it's, it's not a distribution, so we don't, I don't say heavy tail, but yeah. It's the correlation, so this, okay, one half is sort of one half fish, it's, it's below one, which means that it's, extremely long range, I mean, in, in theory, in, in principle, it means that it's, it's, it's uh, decays to zero while going to infinity. Of course, in a real market, you cannot really, you cannot define, so, I mean, up to which you can measure things, it is, it is extremely long range correlated. Uh, so there is one more thing I wanted to add here, which is a bit too, to confuse you and to and to and to and to and to answer one thing that we looked at before, which is uh, I'm lost with all this shit. Which is another? Where is it? Okay, it's here. Uh, which is a model, uh, I will very briefly discuss it, okay? It's, 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 it's very similar to what was there before, but uh, another intuition to get, which call, connects it to what you uh, so it's called, uh, to write up the name, it's Madhavan. Richardson and uh, Rumens. A model which is, uh, which comes from economists, but somehow it's, it's very similar to, to what was uh, this, let's say, Ghost and Milgram type of thing. So assume that, uh, that there is a, so in this Ghost and Milgram, these type of things, we had the fundamental price, right? And the, there was an issue that came up, so some, something non-measurable, this is the economics type of model, something that came up that this is a single, it, it doesn't evolve, evolve in time, so it's, that also makes these models non-realistic. So you can assume that, that, this, the, the, that, that this does evolve in time. What, the, what is this fundamental price? And actually for simplification, we will call it simply PT, which is the trade price. So we will say that, okay, we don't, there are no strange definitions of prices. It's the price at which you trade, the info, the, 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 that, that on which people can have information, et cetera. And so exactly in the same, same manner, as, uh, it's, it's similar to, to what we discussed last time, which were these history-dependent impact models. So you could, you could have a model in which you say that PT minus PT minus one is, is this type of model. So I won't go much into detail. Where, so for those who were not here, so this is defined Okay, so there was this type of model which actually in a very simple case maps to the propagator that we had, but in general case does not, is that you say, okay, the price change will be a constant, there is no lag dependence here, times a type of surprise. So the sign that appears at T, the direction of the trade that appears at T, minus the best expectation of this direction one, one time step before, okay? We, we discussed this, uh, you're not happy. <laughs> so we discussed a, mo a type of model like this uh, on, on Friday. So those who were here uh, saw it, those who don't, we can check it in the, the slides, but I won't, we won't go into much, much uh, detail here. But so, 
what I would just want to say is that you, okay, this, this is a model which is very sim similar to what, what we had in propagator models because, so if this epsilon is some linear combination of past epsilons, you can map it one to one. And also in a model like this, you can get, get to the type of um, uh, description that we had in this Gloucester Milgram type of thing. So you say, okay, so if there is a, if there is a market maker, he wants to protect himself from the others, this is the way prices evolve. So what he will want to do is, well, it's exactly the same equation that we had a few lectures ago. He wants to do this uh, to set the ask price that he, which he's uh, ready to sell as this. Okay. So he says, okay, I want to set my price to the point which is the expected price at t plus one given that someone wanted to, to buy. It's exactly this that he will, uh, okay? Which will become okay, so, so he will have a, and in the same way he can set his bid price, okay? I won't write it up, but it's, it's the same equations that we had uh, uh, three lectures ago. So you can come up, okay, so there is it's a trivial solution that this can have, so this will be I didn't do anything, I just wrote things in. But so for this similar very trivial type of of of, uh, of structure of the market, he can he can set uh, his 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 quotes A and B. And one can, so, 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 and, 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 and what is good in this case is that, okay, so, so there is a dynamics in it. It's not that he will be, a, he, will, he does a one step trading and he can get out of the market, but, uh, but, but things evolve and it's on the long term that he, that he, that he has to break even, so not, not lose in the market. So I just want to say two things in this, about this thing, and then, then, then we go to things which are more interesting is, uh, so one thing is that, okay, so, so, I would just write up the predictions of a model like this, and if you want, it's, 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 we, we don't have time to discuss it, and it's not essential, I think. So, so what this will do is like give the following predictions. It will give, for example, a prediction for uh, for the spread, okay, which is obviously this, which. If one writes up this stuff here, which will be simply 2G star in this model. And another thing that you can get as a prediction exactly in, this, I mean, uh, in the way that we had before, you can get a type of prediction following. So, so this is, let's say, one. And the, 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 the response of the price to an action on long scales, which you, I, I really just write it up, it will be in the slides, but it's super simple to calculate it well, if I want, will be something like this. Soon we'll be done with this type of models and we'll go to more interesting. So these are, okay, these are simply very simple to calculate from these dynamics. It's, it's a super simple market. But okay, it, it, it gives some, so what, 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 what is the new thing in a model like this is that it's, well, it's somehow in the same old setting, but it gives, for example, a relation, you, have, you get a relation between the spread, which is what this market maker will gain immediately in the market, or the half of it he will gain immediately. And the response of the price, which is exactly what he's going to lose. He's trading against you and he's afraid that actually the, so the, that, that, he, that he sells to you at 100, but actually the price will be going up later. So he's losing on you because he could have sold later. So actually there is a relation here between, so this is somehow an, uh, the loss of the market maker. And this is the gain, well, this we see. So first of all, one can come up with, uh, analyze this is how, how, in what regimes, how does this market work? We don't really care. 
But actually what we can see, so it's, it's a very, very simplified model, but it gives testable predictions. So these in a real market are, so of course CL is the autocorrelation of the order flow as always. So th this, is a, this is a testable prediction, right? The second line. So actually if one looks at it, uh, uh, exactly it's here, so on, on the left hand side, Actually, su such a simple prediction can work well. So what we do here is, uh, well, it's, it's exactly this thing, just the way it is done. It's a bit reorganizing the, the, the terms of this equation, but it's the same that we are plotting. So what you can see is that actually, okay, it was a super trivial model, but this economic style, but putting some dynamics in it, it seems to work okay on a daily scale. So what is what do we see here? S Tip average spread on a day and average of this thing on a daily level. So, so putting all data from a day together and it seems to be okay working. It's not perfect, but not bad. The problem comes actually if you look for, for, for long, shorter time scale. So that's what you see on the right hand side. You, it's exactly the same things that you're plotting, but not daily level, but one hour statistics anyway. So, so in smaller windows. And you see that there it, it, it breaks down, it's, it's different. Actually, what you would see is that when this quantity here is small, spreads are larger than they should be, according to this model, and here they are below what they should be. So what, what this means that this type of simple model, it, it's a bit the same message of, as, as there was in, in, a type, in a propagator model, that overall they can give some good prediction, but if you look at the, the, the dynamics on short scales, they, 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 they are not able to describe what's, what's going on, different correlation. Okay, so, I know I was fast on this and it, I think it's not completely clear, but I don't want to spend more time on this model. The calculations are clear and, and there is not, not much more insight than uh, than, than, than uh, I want to have. But anyway, if you have questions afterwards, you think about it, if you have questions, we can discuss, but it's, they want, uh, this model won't go to the exam, okay? Um, so, so, so that's it for me for this type of, uh, Super phenomenological models, right? He, he, what, what you do here is you come up with something like this. You can test its predictions, but you don't know. Even if it were perfect, a model like this, or if, even if the propagator was perfect, you wouldn't understand what, what, why is the G behaving exactly like this. It's, it's, not, it's not explaining really the, the, the underlying microscopic behavior. So actually what I want to get to is, uh, is another family of models, which well, I would hope that it's more, uh, it's closer to your heart. It's closer to my heart for sure. Uh, so it's about, uh, it's about modeling uh, the effect that we have seen. Here is, there was this curve so that the impact increases the square root of the, of, of the volume of your meta order. So it was something like this. Right? There was, uh, this, this is okay, this, this we discussed. So Q is the, the size of your meta order. Volatility is the volatility <laughs> of the price on, on a scale T, and V is the volume traded in the market on the same scale T on which you're acting. And uh, your impact, so the, the, the change in the price in the direction which you are trading, in, trading so this is uh, P T minus P zero times epsilon of your trade, somehow this. So the final price minus the initial in your direction will behave like this. And so we saw several things here that actually this T doesn't really matter. You can put different time scale. It doesn't really matter because uh, it's okay. I don't think I, I mean, no, no, no. tell me if, if I have to return to these questions. Or it's clear, it's clear to you, but <laughs> this is your uh, internship. So, okay, if you have questions, ask me, please, because uh, uh, some, so anyway, this is what we are trying to model, and, uh, and just to come up, just, just, just to mention, so that of, this is 
this is, so these are relatively new things. So this is, for, okay, maybe since the end of the 90s, people started measuring this, but, 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 but it's not a century old uh, phenomenon. And there are several type of, 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 of models for these type of things, and uh, which, which I think do not work, which, which are contradictory. Um, and okay, actually I have a slide about it. I won't write it up, but I just want to briefly explain. I, I put some slide today because uh, so I have a slide from a talk uh, that, that I did some time, some time ago, actually because I, I, I worked on this model a lot, so that's why. So there are three types of models in the literature for this type of behavior, and I will just quickly explain. I'm not sure it's, if you just read it, I don't think it's, the language is not super clear. One is that, that uh, these economic types of model that, that, okay, so if you're trading a quantity Q against someone, so someone is buying, it's if there is only one person in the market against you, so who bought this from you, then he will own this quantity Q at the end, and he wants to get rid of this, this position. And you can come up with arguments that, okay, so it, the, the time he needs will be linear in Q to get rid of this position, which means that the typical movement of the price, so the volatility of, of the price, would be square root of, uh, of time, and it would be somehow square root of Q, and so he, 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 he to, to, to protect him from this, himself from this risk, he, can, he, he moves the price. So there are these very, very economic type of, of models, which I, there are several problems with it. I, I won't go into detail. I rather want to go to the third type of model at the end, but, but just to say there is another type of model which is actually similar to the, to the economics type of model that we discussed, that there is some, this type of, uh, fair price conditions, so no one can consistently gain, no one can consistently lose in a market, which is based on, uh, which is actually done by physicists, but based on uh, these things. Uh, okay, I, I won't, but, but again, there, there are super realistic assumptions. So there are several behavioral models, and, uh, and actually the third type of model that I want to discuss is, okay, let's just try to be, let's not try to understand everything in the immediately, but just let's try to see what, what can be the case. So if you say that, that uh, the impact increases the square root of, of your quantity, that in, a first, that in a very simple world would mean the following. So, so if you imagine a, an order book which looks like this. So this would be the best bid, this would be the best ask, and this is the, the volume in the market that is available. Okay, if, a, if there is a linear profile, it should be the same linear, just that I cannot draw, uh, which is exactly this equation here, right? So the, the, the volume in the book goes as the difference from the, from the P0, from the best price. Then of course, if you start trading in a book like this and you trade a lot, if you start eating the volume, what you eat would be the area here. This would be, if you trade a Q, this would be the Q that you, that you eat. And the, the, the change in the price would be exactly this thing here, which would be somehow square root of Q, okay? So it's, it's, it's simply geometric uh, reasoning. And it's clear, right? And so the question is, okay, can we, can we understand the model in which, so okay, empirics suggest that it should be somehow like this. The problem is that actually markets do not look like this at all. So if you look at, uh, at an actual market, uh, the way, I don't know if I have colors, but the way the volume looks like, so th this would be an idealistic volume from this equation here. But actually if you look at the market, some of you, you see something like this. Okay, so pretty different uh, from, from, from this, from, from what you see. So the question that comes up in, uh, if, if you want to do just some sort of, okay, this is a completely mechanical approach to this. We don't want to, uh, we, we don't see what's going on, but this would be end. So actually we, we do not see, so, so, so why should be this profile linear? We do not see that at all, but also, this is super simplified stuff that I showed here about the linearity, of course, because what happens is that the price itself is moving all the time. So, 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 so this, let's say, let's say, go talk about the mid price. So the mid here is moving a lot, 
and which see actually here that, uh, so this will discuss the orders of magnitude, is that the typical movements of the price is this, right? So the, the, the amount of which by, uh, by which you change the price is, is a small fraction of this, is, is a 1% of this or something. So it's, it's, a, it's a very idealized uh, view. Even if it were linear, you are adding some, so some diffusive behavior which is much, uh, which has much uh, larger movements than what, than what you're measuring. How, how could it work in any case, okay? So because this is, on, so this is not what we see. But, uh, but we will try to understand these type of models. So how, how, what can we do in a mechanical way? So and for this, so actually these, uh, even if these are very mechanical models in this sense, what we want to come up is some type of uh, what is called agent-based model. Which, which is, I mean, in a physics language, it would be microscopic, uh, microscopic model. So what, what we try to do is describe the, 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 the dynamics of the system on the micro level. That could lead to something like this and then think about the, about the effects, okay? So agent-based actually seems, seems to be a different world, of course. An agent-based model, it, is a, it has a microscopic uh, behavior in it, so microscopic dynamics, but it can be also a very simple dynamics. So it's, it's, it's not given that it has to be something super complicated. Um, so, okay, so, so, so this, is, this greenish stuff is what we see. Actually, it's, uh, it's, it's even more pointed to, to the left. So I, I think it's actually, it's maybe even more like this. So, most of the, 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 the weight being close to the, close to the best price. There is an understanding about this, so why, why is it like that? And then how, how does reasoning go? Uh, well, the reason goes the following way. Okay, this is the green stuff that I see, but of course the green stuff is very much conditioned. So people, you only put your limit order in the book if you think that there is any sense in putting it, right? So, so we said that you can put a limit order to any price. But of course, if you put a limit order here, it's not very useful because no, the price, no one will trade with you now there. I mean, here to sell. Uh, no one will trade you th there, but some the, but people know that you want to trade there. So it, you're giving away information, but you're, you, it's no use of it. So actually the, the reasoning goes the following way. Well, one thing that you know, you do know, is that even if, the, if this is green type of curve that you see for the actual volume in the limit order book, you know that as you go further away from the price, the, the, the available volume, which you do not see, should increase, right? Why does it mean, why is this the case? Well, if the price is 100 now, there are people who are, okay, so, so, so this price is, I don't know, 105. There are some people who are ready to sell for this price, but surely there are more people who would be ready to sell at 102, because it will contain everyone who wanted to sell here and those in between. And the further you go away, the more people want to sell, right? If you, if you go up to 200, then everyone who owns this stuff will be ready to sell it to you and go home. So there is a trivial idea here that even if you do not see it, there has to be a volume there somehow, which is called, a, it has, so we will call it latent. There is a volume that you do not see, but you believe strongly that it should be there. And what we will try is to, to model this latent volume in the, in the order book. And then we will try to, of course, uh, what can one do? Okay, you can come up with models that, that, that model the latent, the latent volume. Then you will have uh, stepped, okay, so why is this, how does this become visible? So how, how to connect, let's say in this picture, the, the white and the green? but that's, that we leave for later. Is, is this clear what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to argue? Someone should answer, huh? Yes, is it clear? Is it clear? Because if we should discuss it, if it's not clear, we should discuss it uh, now. So what I say is that, uh, that for very simple economic reasons, you know that 
the available volume further away from the price has to increase. You don't know that it has to increase linearly, but you know that it has to increase. So what you actually see in the book might not be the good quantity to look at. So we try to come up with models to, 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 to see this. And so you'll come with, come with a super simple model to start with. So, 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 so okay, we, we call it uh, an agent-based model, but we'll come up with a sort of uh, deposition, what's the name of it? It's deposition evaporation type of process to, to model this because that's what we like, these type of models, is that, uh, is the following, okay, I don't think I have slides about this. Someone asked something. There's a question? So this latent order book is in the first, so, so we'll uh, essentially look at two versions, but a, a simple version is, is to say that you have some uh, rain of particles that fall on the price, on the, on the, on the price axis. So you say, okay, I don't care about people. I want to simplify world. I say that these are particles falling here. They have some dyna microscopic dynamics, but that's it. So what we'll say is that, okay, it is, deposition type model and the uh, assumptions will be very few so one is that you say that um, at, so, so at, at time t you have a price which is called pt and what you say is that uh, that, that there are, okay, some particles or some investors that decide to, so, okay, so how to put it actually, I could have made a slide on this. So, put a limit order at, uh, what is it, P, T, plus, minus U, so somewhere a given distance from the current uh, price. With some uh, with some probability of well, I call it lambda minus plus u okay dt so what what is this okay at t okay so okay I uh, I write it in an ugly way but I think so this should be is it coming from physics? So what you say is, okay, there are, let's say, particles falling with some rate lambda, which has a plus minus uh, subscript, uh, which we'll actually remove later. It could be different in different sides of the book. What you say is that now the price is PT. There will be particles arriving at PT U distance from this PT with a rate so in a given window, t plus d, uh, length of dt, it will be this rate time dt, the probability of a particle falling somewhere. Yes. Uh, and sorry, and, uh, and okay, for to get back to the origin, we call these limit orders, but okay. Why the lambda subscripts just change? I mean, yes, okay, so, so, okay, actually we will also even forget the subscripts. What I say here is that you could in theory say that so those that arrive above the price will be orders to sell, right? Because people want to sell at an expensive price. So above the price, it will be selling orders, okay? It's the sign of the trade. It's, uh, it's the sign of the wish that you want to, yeah. So it's, but uh, okay, it's, it's, we write it like this to, to be general, but we'll simplify life. And actually, if you want, I can just simplify. Uh, okay, no, no, I'll simplify in a second. Um, and uh, so this is one. You say that okay, there is a there is a the okay in a financial language they can also cancel what they do. So if I said put a limit order, they can cancel uh, with a rate uh, which I will call new. I don't know why. Uh, so any distance from the from the price again u. You can have a rate of cancellation, evaporation in a, in a physics model, right? Which will define a, so this defines somehow a lifetime 
of each particle staying there being somehow one over nu. Okay. Why is there a okay? Why is there a u dependence here? Of course, you would guess in a first approximation that the further you're away from the price, the 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 these rates should change, or could change, okay, in a general setting. So this is okay. So these are particles falling, but they don't do anything for the moment. So in this model, in this model, what you say is that okay, let's add something a bit uh, by hand. So we say that 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 uh, so there is a this price fluctuates. So the middle is fluctuating, and uh, so in a diffusive manner. So which will be effect of no sorry. Uh, just, uh, effect of market orders, which will have some sigma uh, diffusion coefficient. And sorry, uh, it's a, uh, we only say that they fluctuate. We don't know what, what, what really happens because, uh, okay, we'll, we'll see the details. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple model, okay? So what, is, what does this mean? In, in a physics language, it would be, okay, there is some particles falling, so some which, which, which have a finite lifetime, but they stay there. So there is some media, medium, in which there is a there is a price which fluctuates, which which moves. Okay. By price, I mean. With respect to this price, let's say here. With, with respect to one price, actually here. So I mean, at this point, uh, okay, the price is uh, okay. With, with respect to the mid, uh, in this drawing, so so here there is no clear this. I mean, you don't know how it will look like. So actually, your first guess that that it should be that these these three prices should be the same in this situation. If, if you don't put anything else. Um, so I think the assumption you are saying that mid price fluctuates. Yes. So you add in, in by hand, you say that, okay, there are these things falling. They don't do anything for now. So we will actually will get a more complicated. You could say that, okay, they, they, they interact with each other, but for now they don't. They fall, they have a lifetime, and then there is something which is a price which uh, diffuses. Uh, yeah? Yeah, so exactly, it's a, it, it, indeed, we will go step by step. So here we have, a step, we have something which is, which is not agent-based well enough. We say there is a diffusion for a God-given diffusion uh, there. But yes, it's, uh, we will get to this. Actually, this will be a difficulty. This, this will be a problem. And we'll try to, but okay, we will try to be step by step. So okay, so, so this type of models, I think, uh, uh, did this you remember the idea here? Uh, I can clean. Uh, so these type of models can be okay, can be can be analyzed and solved. So one can write up uh, the, the 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 density. So we'll move more to density of the order book because we are in continuous. So we'll define okay. So rho we still keep okay for the 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 the, the indices. So, so we'll define the following. So okay. The, this, the density of the book at that point u in time t, we will define simply as the as the volume there. Sorry. So so so, so we'll do some type of average over this. So the 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 the, 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 the volume you, you you can look at how these things look like looks like in any moment. Okay, it's trivial. So, so over Okay, so what we can define the density in, in this way. So you, you look at all the different paths and you have everything over and you can write up a, an equation for so a master equation for the dynamics. We write it up, but it's it's not too complicated. So it will be something like this. Uh, well, I write it up and then we discuss. Uh, I 
think I didn't make a mistake. So what I simply do is write up the dynamics of this uh, of these densities. Uh, how do you say it? Uh, motion. What's the word for this? Equation of motion. Uh, so and there is okay. Let's forget. Okay, so, so we simplify phi life because it's better. So is it clear what I'm doing here? I say, okay, so, so, so the, 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 the dynamics of this uh, density, so the, 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 the change in time, how will it look like? Okay, there will be things falling, so it increases with lambda. Things evaporating, which, uh, which is with a rate, so it's, uh, things have to be there to evaporate, so it's, it's a new times rho rate, total rate. And there is a diffusion that we put in by hand with a diffusion constant sigma. So there will be, uh, okay, so it's sort of a diffusion equation. So can you repeat the, the, the meaning of the term in the second derivative, the second derivative? Here. So it's, yeah. So it's a diff. It's a diffusion. Yeah. Okay. It's a diff so, so we added a diffusion here, so we have to do something with that. It's a diffusion. Okay. So, okay, one can solve this if one wants to. What do you want? Okay. Uh, okay, no, one cannot solve this so simply because you have to have some, 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 some boundary condition. But actually what you have is that how do you define the price which is moving? Well, the price which is moving and it, so what does the, okay, sorry, what does the effect, uh, something that I didn't really define so well. So, so, so this price diffusing here is, is, is eating into, so, so there is a, still a financial model. So what he does is that, okay, price moves somewhere, heats up all the volume going there. Right, this is the way a price is defined. Is this clear? Is it clear? So, price is given by uh, uh, by by so price is given by the point where uh, uh, where where this density will be zero. And okay, so you can come up with some, okay, this we'll get back to in a second, but okay, so, so some very simple cases. In quite general, you can give the following, uh, the, the, the following thing. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, so okay. If you define rho zero as zero, so the price, where the price is, so, so, so we are in, in uh, distance from the price, where the price is, there is no density is zero, and and that and that uh, and that lambda zero and nu zero is finite. So close to the breast price. Th these are well-behaving uh, quantities. There is no infinite flow coming on the, uh, on, the, on the on the price, and no infinite uh, diffusion. Then then one can solve this, and. Uh, and okay, sorry. So if this is the case, then you will have some linear behavior actually in a model like this. Uh, okay. But we'll, we will get to an explicit. So, so okay, it's a general thing. If things are, so if this is if this is the way you define uh, zero. And things are regular around, then then it will be a linear locally. It will be linear some somewhere. It's in any of these uh, diffusion deposition processes. But actually, you can you can you can look at uh, so, so okay we can we can if if you define so let's say. Example for this, you can say that, that 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 you remove most of the dependence. You want to say that okay, let's say that lambda u is lambda nu u is nu. So there is no nothing depends from the distance. Okay, so it's actually it's, it's not super realistic, but even in this case you can uh, you can solve this this equation, so in, and and you will get that the row so the stationary shape of the book will be. Something like this. Uh, 
some shape like this. Okay, so this, this is the solution of the, if you put in it, you find it. And, and okay, so, so what, what, what do things mean with this U star being, uh, well, I write it up because it's important to understand a bit what, what the structure is, will be something like this. And, uh, and probably this thing will be, I think this will be simply this. Yes, so this model doesn't give a, re in, okay. There could be a region, but, uh, and then you have to be careful, no, sorry, in, no, in a model like this, if things are falling, then it shouldn't, it, 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 should, it shouldn't give a, I mean, if, things, if everything is continuous, then, then it should be point-like. So there, is, there are things, again, it's a model, there are things now that you're not modeling, you're modeling the price, the mid. Uh, if one can come up with more, comp you could discretize, well, if you'd say that you're on a discrete grid already, you will have a, have a difference between the two. So okay, you can come, this is the solution. And so what does this mean? That you will have some type of order book that looks okay. So in the middle, it will be somehow linear, okay? And you know that far away, it will have some, some, some level. So okay, so this will be, Rho infinite, and okay, and you don't know how exactly you go there. Your guess is something like this, okay? But what you know is that, okay, very far away where the diffusion doesn't matter, it's only lambda and, and nu which matters, so the, the, the higher the rate of falling, the higher it will be, so, so you will have this, type, this depth far away. And you, you will have a, and you will have a linear behavior close to this regime, which actually this U star should give the, give the, um, give the width of this. So actually what you would say is that this is U star. So, so the scale on which you can assume that, that this, book, that this uh, book is linear, okay? So what did you say? We, we came up with, with a model in which some things are microscopic, but there is a diffusive price, which we don't all like, and we will discuss it. But what you can say is that you get some locally linear profile for something, which we, we, we didn't say that this is really the order book because you have to think about the numbers. You will have something which is linear around the price on this scale. And so, and so what is this scale really? Well, one over nu, it's not here, but so, so, so one over nu is somehow the lifetime. Of, of, of an order, right? The time it stays there before evaporating. So this U star will be something like the, the, the volatility over, uh, over, over, over one over, over the time scale, one over new, okay? Okay. The exec no, so the execution in a model like this is modeled by the diffusion in the middle. So there is, and it's put in as an extra thing. It's, we say that it's diffusing. We, 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 we assume that there is a diffusion in the middle that eats up the existing volume, which will be an effect of executions, which is the market order. So it's, it's, it's simplified. But so what it says is, um, is that, um, is that, okay. Okay, that, that, that you, you, you get some, some, uh, some, some uh, width of the linear reg regime, which is essentially the volatility over the lifetime of an order. Now, what is the lifetime of an order? There you have to be careful, because this is, here it's the question that, um, that, uh, that this, is, this a, is this the real order book or a latent order book? Well, what we are assuming here is that, so that, that this latent order book is the real intentions of people, so not the things that you really see in the, in the actual order book. This is what people 
would do if, if, if there was no information uh, leakage. So what you expect is that, that this should be order of, okay, so this is an assumption, but you think that this is order of days, that, that the actual real decision of most of people, so, so like the average of one over new will be defined by the slow players in a market, so this lifetime. Um, and you say that you expect that this should be dominated by the people who, who are slow, so who really have an idea of how the price should move uh, on longer timescales and not just locally at the best. But this, so, so this is a, the way one has an intuition about this model. This is not written in the model, yeah? No, you don't know anything about their information okay. here. You say that they behave like this. Actually, one would say that actually this type of model, since we said that rho is, uh, so there are people falling, right? To prices where I want to, to trade. Actually, this type of model, well, I would call right, rather like zero intelligence. Actually, that's the way you call it. There is no really, you, you do a microscope, you put a microscopic behavior, and we will put some extra in it. But there is no real intelligence in it, right? You say that, uh, okay, one approach is like, can I, okay, if you come from physics, the question would be asked a bit like this, okay, can I reproduce parts of the things that I measure with completely non-intelligent, so as if they were particles who have to obey the rules, of course, of a market, so there is a structure given. It's okay. Um, so you get a linear regime, okay, this we found, so, so we are happy. We, there is some underlying linearity that we, we should have uh, close to the best price. And actually this is quite general, so I just, uh, uh, okay, it has actually several consequences that I want to write up and then I want to get to a bit enriching this. And then, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's up to, it's, 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 it's a family of models that are called usually zero intelligence, so it's, it's a quite, usual approach, or at least uh, among physicists, to say, okay, like, can, can I reproduce the things that I can measure with, there are all these great ideas of how people act, but okay, if they were simple parts, simply particles, what would be the macroscopic uh, prediction from that? So, so, so just to say, okay, so this here, here we gave an example, but it can be generalized quite well, so, so in a general result, you can say that linear, Book profile is extremely general, yeah, so I wrote up what you want is, uh, okay, there are two things. Uh, what you want is rates that are regular, well behaving, whatever, uh, around zero. So no infinite flow at the best, uh, close to zero, so, so I mean, of course you can, do some strange stuff in a system like this, but if it's not the case, which is a wide behavior, and you say, and uh, diffusive price, what we call price here, in that case you have linear profile of the book for some region. Okay, it's not a super, I mean, of course, it's, it's sort of general because you can do an expansion close to, the, close to zero. You, well, as I said, the, the second is, so, Weights of this linear regime is, uh, is related to the lifetime So it's related to the volatility on the lifetime of, uh, of, of the diffusive process on the lifetime of an order. So okay, this is what you said. Another thing which is important to think about, which is, which is here, but you, you, you can say that, so the volume here will be, will be vanishingly small. So, so what I, I will call, uh, what I call the best, so the volume at the best selling or, bid, uh, or uh, buying price. Is, is, is vanishingly small. Uh, 
actually, okay, it will be absolutely vanishing if you're a continuous world. You can put a discrete tick size in the system to make, and then you can give an exact calculation. But indeed, you will find that what is there very close to the best is, is uh, I don't write up the orders of magnitude, but is, is, is several orders of magnitude lower than, than other meaningful volumes. So actually, in, in a very simple model like this, what, what you can say is that there, there are essentially two type of consequences. So, so, so this is the general result. And the consequence is, is that one, is it visible? That uh, I write it up and then I explain. So there are the, the two consequences, you know, I mean, getting back a bit to the financial language, but, but of all this, that there will be a vanishingly small volume available in the order book at any given moment. So you will, if, you, if you're trading in a market like this, you have to cut up your trades. You, you have to really trade only incrementally. So it will give a, an explanation of why, why there is this long memory order flow in a real market. So you have to split up your large trades into small pieces. And we will see, well, we see it from here. So there will be a square root impact of the meta orders, which is, well, essentially we see it here. We will have to see if, if it really works in this model, but it should work, right? If, if, if the profile is linear. Is it clear what I'm saying? Uh, so you, you have the feeling that in a simple model, you get these two things out as consequences, and then somehow this should be related. So it should be the two sides of, of, the, of the same thing. Now, the problem is that, uh, that okay, so this is super nice that we wrote up, but, it's, but uh, the question is, okay, can, can we really trust all these results? And, well, I think no, because there are two things. So one, one was already pointed out. So that we put in a diffusivity by hand in this model. So first of all, you cannot really call it microscopic. And why should be there diffusivity? I will discuss it in a second. And, uh, and the other point is what, what I discussed before. So sure, if you, if you do the calculation, you will find that locally this is linear. But what is not clear that if, if you enact, actually, if there was a market which had this behavior, and then you come to trade your meta order in a market like this, so you're an extra flow pushing the price, why should this? square root picture dominate if there is a price which moves uh, like crazy around, diffuses much more, okay? So this is what we'll try to see. So there are two approaches here. Um, we'll have to, we will go both of them. So one is to, okay, let's try to enrich this model a bit. So, so let, let's go from this model. So we have an idea of a model. Let's go to a numerical version to see how it would behave and to, to prove, to, to see at least if, if, the, if the claims are true and how things can be diffusive. And then we'll get to another model which is slightly more consistent, so you give more dynamics to it. I, I think it will be tomorrow morning. Um, okay, we will have to discuss about that. So, um, so okay, so actually here I have slides, which is good. So, so the, the problem is these type of models, it's again very general, so it's, 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 there is no, no, no financial uh, issue here, is that, that if you have a, let's say, local linear profile of a book and you're, diff you're trying to diffuse in it. So let's say you, you put a simple random, so, so okay, let's go, to a, sorry, let's go to a bit finance language. There is a, someone there who is, who is doing mar market orders, who is eating volumes from both sides. And he's doing, let's say, a random walk in the two directions. Then actually you will never have, even if you wanted to have diffusion, in a simple picture you wouldn't have diffusion. So what, what would happen is that, okay, you have a moment like this of the order book. So, so, uh, in the beginning, so that's what's, what's there locally. But if, you, if, if there is a walker who starts to go in one direction and the other and eating up the volume, so, so some, the way you would think in a market, you would for easy, so let's say you start eating here, so what you will end up with, uh, okay, maybe there is some difference, uh, but you will end up with something like this. Okay, so, so you will have a higher wall here if you ate into it and, and, and things didn't change. So in short times, you will have a higher wall 
in front of you in that direction than behind you. Is this clear? So you're doing this and you start walking into it, always taking unit, uh, unit quantities. Okay? It's not clear. It's clear? No, no, but tell me if it's, it's, it doesn't have to be clear at all. <laughs> but you have to ask me. Because I see many people here are saying, sure. And then I don't know if uh, there are people who don't uh, follow. Okay, so either you ask now or you ask later. Or so the problem is that in a process like this, actually in, in a simple manner, you will have super subdiffusive behavior. Because what would happen here, there is someone eating in a book in the two sides, and by pushing it into, by eating into one side, he finds a larger wall in that direction than in the other. So the probability of, uh, if is one half probability he will eat it, unit quantity from one side of the other, it's more probable that he will be going back. He will be moving the price back because it's easier to eat a level here than to eat a level here, okay? So actually, it's not at all trivial how to, how to so there is some confining effect. If, I mean, put a walker in a random media and it will be a confining effect. So what we do, actually, in a numerical, so now we go to a numerical version of this model. You can do thi two things to, 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 to get to a diffusive process, and the two things are the following. You will add an autocorrelate, so you will add someone who is walking here in the middle, so the effect of market orders going, uh, eating into the book, but he will have persistence in his directions, in the direction that he tries to eat in the book, okay? So that's what we see here, we see in a numerical setting, you, you, uh, you do this because, uh, because you want to, but because also it's a realistic thing in a market, but because, especially because what you want to achieve is, can we have a diffusive behavior in this media in a, in a, in a natural setting? So you add a, a, a persistence in the direction, which actually doesn't really, still the model is sub-diffusive for, for most, of, in most of the cases. So there is another thing that we'll add is that, so, so again, for this diffusive, uh, point in the middle, you'll add some type of conditioning on the volume. So there is this, this point here, I mean, this, I don't know, what's Pac-Man going around and eating into the volume in the two directions? He won't just have persistence in his moves, but he will also do something which is actually something in markets that you see that, that the, the he, he will take a typically a, a given fraction, he will eat a given fraction of what he sees in front of him. So if he, there is a larger wall, uh, wall in front of him, he will have a larger bite of it to, to, to make the process diffusive. So what we do here is we add two things which, are, which in a real market exist, which is empirically measurable, and we try to tune the system, to try to see if we can make the system diffusive. Okay? So it's, it's, it's only a numerical version. I, I don't uh, describe exactly this, so, so it's, well, it, it's here what, uh, how, how this function behaves. It's, it's not very important, but you condition on what you see, you condition your, your eating on what you see, and actually you, you get to some, you, you, you can tune the system, so have you, okay, we had a gamma, which was the autocorrelation exponent two slides ago, and we had a zeta, which was this guy here, uh, sorry, this, um, There shouldn't be a, there is one extra parenthesis here, I think. Uh, sorry. So, so you, you have these two parameters of your system and you can look at the phase space and what you find is okay, there is a sub-diffusive and a super-diffusive regime and there is a thin line only between them. So this, I suggest it here that actually it won't be that trivial to have diffusive. So you don't have a region when you're diffusive, you have a, a line where you're diffusive. Okay, give it to Shaheen. Uh, and, uh, if you want to be very strict, there are some, some conditions which we won't discuss here. So, so what you see is that, okay, you have a diffusive boundary. It, it, it's, it's clear to understand sort of the behavior in the, in the corners. So, so one, it's, it's intuition tells you that it has to be, the behavior in the extremes has to be like this. And, um, and what we have is, okay, so we added these two, para, two, two, two extra parameters to, to, to our model, so we really made things diffusive, but we had to, uh, had to become numerical and had to add, uh, just a second, extra, extra parameters. And we can check numerically that indeed we, we get to a, a, an order book, so, so a profile of, of the book, which is, uh, which is described by the equations that we had in mind, and which is linear locally 
close to the best. So what I do here is a simulation of this model, empirically simulation. So simulation results and then the theoretical prediction in blue, but well, they match well, so we didn't break the things, and indeed we can get to linearity. Yes. So what I do is, we, we discuss the model here for the deposition and evaporation. We said, okay, we want diffusivity. But if you want to analyze the model further than this, you, can, you want to see, okay, how, how can, what's the way to put diffusivity? So let's do, give some microscopic definition of uh, microscopic behavior that can lead you to diffusivity. What will be these two that, okay, so this guy which is in the middle, we say, okay, he also has a behavior. He is going in one direction or another, eating something. We added two parameters. Unfortunately, we needed to add two parameters. We couldn't do it with less in this case. So one, that he has a persistence in his uh, directions, in his moves. So he's, wo he's walking in this, between these two walls. His persistence in his moves, and he has a, uh, he sees what's in front of him and the conditions, so, I mean, he eats a finite fraction of what's there, okay? Meaning that if there is a huge wall in front of him, it's non-zero probability that he will still, he's not confined by it. If was, he was always eating unit, it, okay? Yeah, so what I'm simulating here is exactly this. I have a price uh, axis, okay? So it, 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 there is some discretization in it, which I don't remember, but it's, it doesn't really matter. There are things falling with lambda, with lambda being constant. There is a new constant set, so an average lifetime. And you add these two further ingredients and you see how does this market behave. So what do you care about? First, can you achieve a, a, a situation where indeed you have diffusivity in this model? And then you want to check, okay, do, so, so that was one issue with this model. The other issue was, okay, do, does the square root impact, dom, does it still work if you have fluctuations, if you have a diffusion in the middle? So we try to look at this numerically. And then I, actually I think tomorrow we'll see a, a model, a, a more consistent model where you don't need to be numerical. Okay? So okay, so, so this, this we discussed and um, Actually, the three points here is that I will show three points, but it doesn't really matter. So you can look, yeah? Sorry? Yes, I don't understand. Is it just a line or is it a region? No, it's a line. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a line. So, yeah, but it's, it's a diffusive behavior, but it's a, it's a line. It's a, so it's a critical system. It's a, you don't have a region, a wide region, where you, where you have diffusivity in this. You, you, well, you have to tune yourself to this, which actually gives uh, questions because, okay, in a numerical you have model, you have, to, uh, you have to tune yourself to this, but that also means that, okay, it was a super zero intelligence, super simple model. It would suggest that, okay, the real world, okay, it's, it's, it's not an exact proof, but what you would get from this is that, okay, so the, you want to be on this line, you know that things are, prices are diffusive, you want to be on this line, but it would suggest that somehow the actions of all of these people organize together to get to, to some point on this line, because that's what you measure. So it's, you could call it self-organized criticality if you want. Um, Okay, so okay, so what we have is we, we put this long memory opposing order flow, uh, so, so this, this gamma and, and zeta, and we get to a linear profile of the book locally. And so what one, one would be interested in this case, okay, do, do we, still staying in a numerical simulation, can we get to, to square root impact? And, uh, and so for this you have to introduce meta orders. It's good that I made some slides here. It's good, you have to introduce uh, a method. So, okay, well, what do we have for now? We have sort of a background market, right? Which is diffusive, which has a local linear profile. And then what you want to do is, okay, let's test this system. I add an extra meta order to it, it's defined in some way. Let's see how, how, what's the response of the market, okay? 
So what I do is the what we do here is the following: is that you 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 add someone extra. So you have the diffusive market, and you add someone extra who is trading always in the same direction. So trading essentially a meta order doesn't really matter in different ways. So, so of course, in an actual model, you want to test uh, different hypotheses. But what he does is in diff is, is he trades in one direction, and you measure how much he pushed the price from the beginning to the end. And, and how it behaves, and actually you find something which is not, not, not that bad. So this is the type of curve that you find uh, at the end. So what do we do, this notations are slightly different, but this here is impact divided by sigma, right? It's, it's this that you want to check if it's true. It was this. Okay. Well, for some reason here, okay, it's delta, which is I here, but it doesn't really matter. So what you do, impact divided by sigma, so change of price divided by the volatility versus the Q over V. So what you see is that if, if the slope of this thing on a long log is, is, is 1.5-ish, then you have a square root behavior. And, uh, and if it doesn't work, you would have a, a slope more like one. And what you get is okay, so, so forget the different colors, it's a different type of uh, settings, but, uh, but what you find is that indeed you, you, you can reproduce a, a square root behavior in a model like this for basic settings. Now, I, don't have, I wanted to show a figure here, which what is, uh, when this model, type of model, of course, breaks down, is that okay, what, 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 what's the entire effect that we are... Um, uh, that we are doing, we have these particles falling, staying there for a while, so somehow there is a linear shape of the book, and, and there is some memory in the book, right? So it's, it's, it will be the, the, the lifetime of orders in the book that, that defines the memory. Once you wait the time that everyone is, every order has evaporated and other orders fell, there cannot be any memory in the system, okay? So actually, uh, I can show you tomorrow. Actually, what you can do is uh, is add meta orders that are that are there executing for longer time or for a time scale which is which is uh, comparable to this thing here, so one over new. And it, indeed, as you expect, things break down and you get back to a linear response because you cannot have anything else in that case. Okay. So. So this is the this is one type of model. So what 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 does one learn from a model like this uh, in the, in, the, in the first place? So so what you see is that okay, with some super uh, simple settings of these things falling, you get you get what is I think very important some vanishingly small liquidity close to the price, which which will has this has to be like this, right? It's particles it's, it's simply the effect of particles falling, but eaten by some some process which is diffusive in the middle. It, it, it has to be super small, uh, uh, the liquidity in the, in the, close to the center, okay, which will, uh, which will close this, close these two, as we discussed. So there has to be some type of splitting in a market like this, because there is not enough liquidity. And, uh, and, 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 and the linear response will be broke, will break down. And, um, and okay, so, so of course what, 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 what this means is, is, is what we have seen, that you have a concave type of impact. It's quite square root, it's not exactly square root. But what is also important is in, a, in, a, in a type of model like this is that if there is this very small volume close to zero, which is available here, what you would expect is that if you add any further fluctuations in a system like this, you can, you can have... Uh, sometimes enormous jumps. So if, if, if you go to a, uh, in equilibrium, things are okay, but if this, this, this volume here is super small, then you can e easily have, because of a small fluctuation, uh, no volume available close to, close to the best price if you go to a financial setting here. And, uh, and these liquidity fluctuations must, must have a very crucial, very important role in, in the dynamics of the price. I don't know if this is clear. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that, well, it's just a very simple claim. Given that the volume close to the best is very small, you expect that any small fluctuation in it, the fact that there is, instead of a very small volume, there is zero volume there, for some reason, can, have, can, can easily happen in a, in a real setup, and will have huge effects of the on the prices. 
An example for this actually, which is, uh, which is a very important question, is that, okay, we're discussing some medium here, which is uh, the latent order book. So it's the real wishes of what people would be doing. But of course, what we have shown in the beginning, that the actual actions of the people, what, what, what are visible, so what they really do, doesn't match this. What does this mean? Yeah, sure, there are people who want to, let's say, on this price, there are a lot of people who want to sell, but only a small fraction of them will be there really in the market having their limit orders. What the others, what you expect, are doing is that, well, I will wait for the price to come closer to this point, and then I will place my order here. Right? So you have to have some type of mapping from this latent wishes to actual actions in a market, so things that you can measure in a, in a market directly. And of course, if you have some small fluctuations, one you could define is that if, if you go back to so leaving, leaving the deposition type of model, but in a, for real people, okay, you can say that now the price is 100. If the price is 102, I want to sell, but I will de define when it comes to 101.5. If I, if to, to put my order, okay, you're waiting. But if the price comes too fast, you might, you might not have the time to, 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 to wake up, and you can have, have few, and if others behave in the same manner as you, you can have huge swings in the, in the price, which actually are things that, that one can measure. So, Okay, and so there are some other important uh, consequences of some types of model like, like this. What I suggest is we stop, and uh, so I want to, okay, tomorrow I want to finish a model which is related to this. Uh, so it's the same, same idea, but bo both further. So instead of adding new numerical things, try, try to add some more behavior. It will be quite fast, but I think it's important. So, I mean, I have the feeling that we have spent a lot of lectures on concepts, and now we get to models that are easier to understand. I don't want to stop without discussing them. Uh, but of course, there won't be other new stuff uh, tomorrow. Uh, and what, I don't know what's the rule. I mean, I'll, try to, I'll try to wrap up a bit. Okay, so from where, where did we start and where did we go? Because I have a clear idea, but I'm not sure everyone has. And that's it, yeah. It's an announcement, I'll tell about the, the tutorial session today. Okay. And so today we're going to have a tutorial session on this, uh, this course at five, okay. about half an hour of tutorial. Half an hour? Yeah, well, an hour and a half. Ah. So five no, I, I, as you like. <laughs> For me, it can be half an hour. But, uh. Okay, and uh, that's it. Yeah, and and sorry, and if you have questions, come. I don't know. Write to me. Come to me, or go to the tutorial. But what about the exam rules? Huh. Because uh, our, on our first exam, we were asked uh, about uh, open book, closed book, solving uh, exercises. Give. Sorry. I am giving the exam. <laughs> <You're t> <laughs> uh, yes, it will be closed book. Okay. It's closed book. Yeah. It it won't be hard. It won't be hard. And the idea. And, okay, so. <laughs> okay, so the idea is for Of course, there won't be definitions. So I mean, it's obvious. Uh, there. What? Won't, will not be. Okay. I mean, so of course, if you understood nothing from the definitions, it will be hard to do the rest, but of course it won't be defined what is a market maker. Um, if you did the, if, I mean, if you followed the f some calculations that we did, it will be, I mean, and the tutorial, that will be enough. Um, so the exercises and pa pa pa. Uh, what else should I say? That I don't know. Okay. That uh, I will have to decide. I mean, it's also ill-defined the number of questions. I can, I can group questions together. And uh, yeah, so the idea is not to ask some stupid detail, but to get, uh, did you follow? Did you get the intuition? Did you? Okay, so, so looking, at, uh, look, looking at the models that we had and the ideas of the calculations, I mean, maybe being able to reproduce the important things. And being, okay, it's important to know, I mean, uh, we had a lot of empirical results, and of course, some of these are important, and it might be important to be able to read a figure. 